All right, what's going on, everyone? Uh, it's Wind Model 88 back here with uh, some more shitty content for you. I uh, picked up a little little toy here. So I can get right into it. Um, actually, I have two to show you, but I picked up this one here today. This is the, the Buck, Daisy Buck, the Model 105. Uh, me right to it. Picked her up at the old commie, the old commie mart. Get the old OTF here. Out on camera so the feds can track me even more. With my weapon of war here. Uh, my knife, not the BB gun. Uh, weapon of war. Come and take it, as they say. But let's get this open here. I'm gonna show you this real quick, and then I'll show you the other one I picked up. Of course, the, the red ride. Of course, there you got your your instructions, your propaganda. Throw that to the side. There's the little buck. <laughs> it is. Uh, it's a little bugger. But uh, get it out of the bag here and go from there. Now, I don't remember the bucks from when I was a kid. Um, I know they were around. They're not like super new. But, uh, you know, back then it was mostly, mostly Red Riders. Of course, the... Uh, then the Crossmans kind of came out, and, but uh, I just scratched it getting it off there. They will put a little more of these fucking stupid plastic clips on there. You don't even need them. Anyway, this is going to be beat around anyway, but as you see, just scratched her with my knife. Eh, go fuck yourself. Some little Chinaman had to use his little tiny fingers like he has his little tiny dick. He had to pull that so tight there he can't even fit a knife inside it. There's no need for that. But I might just, uh, he just pissed me off. I might just redo this whole stock now. I'll do it my way. It'll look better anyhow. There's the buck. Yeah, we'll redo that. We'll do this stock my way. But that's the little buck. Yeah, the wood on the buck is garbage. That's, I don't know what that is. Chinese, Chinese fur, something. I don't know. It's trash. That's why it scratched so easy. But we'll put my own American touch to that. We'll make it look better than it does now. So that's the buck. You know, the uh, fixed open rear sight, the blade and ramp front, that's where you load it, push it in, flip up, uh, simple, that's kind of, uh, it's kind of heavy for a child, I need some lube in there definitely, but that's the buck, put the scratch because the Chinese like to, uh, Put these little straps, these little fucking uh, zip ties, so damn tight. Absolutely unneeded. And you won't have to use a knife to cut them. But nice little scratch here because of that. Like I said, it'll look better when I'm done with it than it does now. If that's the buck, we'll set him up here. You fucking pricks. Next timeline, you just weld the motherfucker on there. Fucking stupid idiot. And here's the other one I picked up. I already shot it. Shot there. I picked this up last week. Get this junk out of the way. That's the, the new Red Ride. Brand new Red Ride model. See, it has the barrel band there. Just like the, uh, the Winchester uh, rifle that is modeled after. Uh, same type of sight. 
although the fixed um, the buck is fixed the red ride is adjustable rear and adjustable front I uh, painted that white because I hate looking at black on black stuff my eyes aren't what they used to be as you can see Rogers Arkansas all this garbage here on top how to use it which a kid could even figure that out you don't need to put it on there but that is what it is there's where you put your oil in there you can see your BBs if you got this is full wire it's probably like 600 in here I got this thing loaded up of course this has a saddle ring the leather strap I just uh, I left that on there some people take them off and it doesn't get in my way so I keep it on there as you notice there was no stupid uh, idiotic uh, zip tie on this when it was in the package and it was totally fine you don't need to zip tie stuff especially around this area this isn't coming open you idiots so now you just pissed me off that's all you did but that's the red rider i was going to do a uh, comparison between this one and my my niece's she has one of the older model Red Riders. I was going to do a side by side comparison. I think it was Rusty Shackleford on the live stream on the Terribly Tactical channel the other night. I said, uh, he said he'd ring the bell notification to see that. And I didn't get to see her yet this week. And probably won't till this weekend. So I wanted to do a side by side between the Red Rider and the Buck instead. So maybe next week I'll get to do the old versus new Red Rider. But same thing. It's a one uh got the lever, it's a one cock. You know, you don't pump it, you don't you know cock it multiple times. You know, cock the lever, BB goes ahead and shoot it. And, uh actually I'm out back here, I'll show you. Pretty simple, you got the safe here, cross bolt safe, cock it, BB's in. Ready to fire. Fire. It works good. I really like them brass barrel rings. Um, but I still look at them. The two. You can put it down here a second. Let me move the camera up a little so you can see them both. Let's see if I can get that to stay. As always, shitty content, shitty, shitty content. But move them in the frame a little bit there for you. Sorry, I don't have a fancy camera. This is all just done on my phone. But a little history on the uh, Red Rider and the uh, and the Daisy. It was a uh, Daisy Red Rider BB gun. I uh, found her Clarence Hamilton. Um, first produced, well, the, the Red Rider was first produced in 19, in uh, March of 1940. Of course, it was named after the comic strip character uh, that was, you know, more syndicated nationwide in comic books. Uh, books and uh, of course the movies the silver screen uh, the formal uh, licensing agreement uh, for production of a daisy you know bearing the red rider image was signed in 1939 so I mean these, these they've been around a long time now some of this info I wrote down I looked some of it up and wrote it down so I didn't forget it some of it I did know offhand, so don't think I'm like a, a super knowledgeable person on Red Riders. I said a lot of the stuff I had to look up and wrote it down, but I'm going to give you guys a little 
a bit of history on them, so. This is what we're doing. Huh. Of course, the Red Rider itself is based off of the, uh, in my opinion, uh, probably the best looking lever action gun ever made. Now, till to this day, uh, is based off the Winchester model 1894. Of course, the old West gun. You see them in a lot of the, uh, a lot of the old westerns. With the barrel rings just like you see on the red rod bb gun here smooth lever action you know you're playing jane sights the uh nice finished wood wooden steel baby so that's that's all that matters to me um now the number the number 111 model uh number 111 model 40 which is the original model red rider it was finally discontinued in 1953 uh, after nearly 6 million copies uh, were produced and shipped out to, you know, a bunch of eager youngsters. Uh, in 1949 alone, over 1 million Red Riders were produced just in 1949. Uh, it was said that uh, general manager of the uh, this was back when it was a uh, it was an iron windmill company. I'll get into that later. But said that not long after they switched to predominantly guns, uh, making guns and selling guns, uh, general manager of the uh, I guess it would be like their test committee or whatever you want to call it, their board it was L. C. Huff. He test fired the very first gun, and after he shot, he exclaimed, in quotes, Boy, that's a daisy, he says. And of course, the rest is history. Well, that's how they got their name. The man shot the gun, loved it so much, proclaimed, Boy, that's a daisy. Of course, you know, back in the day, a daisy was more or less meaning, like, what we call awesome or cool you know it was kind of the best of the best whatever it was it was great more or less uh, the word daisy so that's how daisy got their name um uh, daisy was originally started in uh plymouth michigan and in 1958 they moved to rogers arkansas uh, due to labor problems up north, um, they found that in the south there was a bigger, bigger uh, labor industry for this kind of stuff, and it just took off when they got to Arkansas, and they're still there today. Uh, I think it was Rusty, Rusty Shackelford. I think it was him on the live chat there, terribly tactical live chat on Sunday. He's saying that he has actually been to the uh, the Daisy Museum. Um, he said it's okay. Uh, nothing special. I've heard mixed reviews on it. I wouldn't mind seeing it myself. But, you know, I'm not going to make a trip from Central PA all the way to Arkansas to see it. It would be cool to see it. You know, something that if I'm ever down in that area, maybe stop in and check it out. But I would not cool as they are the history they are i'm not going to make a special trip down just to see it but if i'm ever in that area i will definitely stop and check them out um a little thing with the daisy company uh, in 2016 they merged with gamo you know gamo outdoors like gamo makes the high powered air rifles and stuff like that so daisy and gamo actually merged they're still merged today um, now jumping back a little bit, we'll go back to 1983. Of course, the not necessarily not the buck, but this did the Daisy, the Red Rider here. The time, the movie that really jump started this thing. I mean, kind of brought it back to life, gave it that boost. Was of course uh, a Christmas story. Everybody knows the Christmas story. Uh, if you don't, 
what rock or cave have you been hiding under? Um, just one of those great Christmas holiday movies. Uh, I get sick of it because they air it like on three different channels, like for two weeks straight. And it's the, yeah, it's the only damn thing on the two channels, like TBS, TNT are the two big ones. I think they put it on CBS a couple times, like, but they just, but it's a good movie. I just get sick of it. You know, I can watch it once, once or twice a year for the season, but it's a good movie. Of course, Ralphie, uh, the young boy, he first sees it in the window of the, the street shop. You know, he falls in love with the, uh, with the Red Rider. Of course, you know, shoot your eye out, kid. Um. Of course, the end of the movie, he finally gets it. You know, his dad has it in the corner. Goes, What's that? And I forgot this gift. And his mom's kind of upset at first. And, and he ends up knocking his glasses off. And his mom thinks uh, he, he did indeed shoot his eye out. But, <laughs> uh, it was a, you know, the oh, sickle fell off the, uh, off the roof, he says. But, um. It's a great movie. Check it out. That's where, you know, if you didn't check it out, you should by now. Good Lord. But uh, that's The Red Rider. Um, Christmas Story really boosted its popularity. Of course, in that, in the movie, when he, uh, when him and his mom and dad and his little brother are under the kitchen there, in the kitchen, like they're under the counter, um, you know, he looks out the window and the, uh, the posse's coming up over his fence or whatever, climbing his roof of his shed. Of course, they make a Black Bart. You know, Black Bart, I forget what does he say. Now you get yours, I think he says. You know, Black Bart was an American outlaw and a famous, you know, a famous robber. Uh, he was actually from England. Uh, came here and resided in New York City. Robbed a lot of stage uh, stagecoaches through his older... His older years, um, so that was Black Bart. He was out in a real outlaw and robber. So that's a little Christmas story uh, rundown. Now the gun it's itself, now this is just a Red Rider. I'm assuming they're pretty much made out of the same thing. All their lever action models, but don't hold me to it. I was just as far as the Red Rider. Um, they are blue metal. You know, they're metal. They're legit metal. Uh, of course, the copper-plated barrel bands on the Red Rider. That's what you see here. Of course, the saddle ring. Shows you the saddle ring on the other side. Uh, of course, they're spring. Uh, air spring driven. Just inertia driven. Or gravity driven, as you will. <clears throat> Uh, a little bit more about, this is kind of neat. I didn't know this. And I just looked this up and found this out today too. So this is pretty neat, I thought. Um, they were formed, the plant that originally produced the guns. Um, that plant initially was formed in 1882. Now you're talking... I mean, that's what, uh, 17 years after the Civil War ended? I mean, uh, yeah, that's it's old. But they were initially formed in 1882, initially as the Plymouth Iron Windmill Company uh, in Plymouth, Michigan, uh, where they manufactured steel windmills. And from 1888, they, this is pretty neat, they started bundling BB caliber air guns with each windmill purchase. Now that's a sales promotion. Now that, that's pretty that's pretty damn neat. You know, way back then, 1880s, windmill company probably, you know, after the Civil War, everything's kind of, you know, still run down. Towns are torn apart economy shit you know people's families torn apart everything's just trying to you know 15 20 years after the civil war you know it takes a while for stuff to get back 
They're probably uh, the windmill, iron windmill deal probably wasn't a uh, a big boom. So, you know, some guy said, hey, let's bundle some BB guns with uh, windmill purchases. You know, we purchase a windmill, we'll throw in a BB gun. That's that's pretty damn cool to me. I think that's neat as shit. Uh, and of course, uh, in 1895, um, so seven years after they started bundling these, uh, it's, uh, yeah, eight, seven, eight years later, in 1895, they changed the company name uh, from Plymouth Iron Windmill Company to just Daisy Manufacturing. And... They no longer sold windmills. They were just strictly a BB gun, a gun manufacturer. Um, so that's kind of neat. If you look back, um, just thinking of what that company started as. You know, they started as a an iron windmill company. I'm probably doing, you know, eh, under par business. You know, you usually don't. Uh, do a promotion thing unless you're you're kind of behind or whatever or you're not where you think you need to be as far as sales uh so they said heck let's throw throw some bb guns some air guns in you know free guns with your purchase of a windmill um and the guns were that good people liked them that much that apparently it just overrode the uh the windmill company production and nobody gave a shit about their windmills anymore they love their guns so much that uh, bye bye windmills, hello, uh, hello Daisy Air Guns. So that's kind of that's that's a really cool story, actually, in my opinion. Um, you know, you never know. Just with business, even now today, you don't you just don't know what's going to take off. One little thing could change everything for you. So um, that, that's super neat. Um. Trying to think that I cover everything mostly. Uh, another little cool thing in Vietnam, uh, they actually use Daisy uh, Daisy Red Rogers in the quick what they call a quick kill training uh, during during basic training. So you know, instead of toting, uh, well, of course, early depending on when they were early to Vietnam, they didn't use the uh, they didn't use the M16s yet. Uh, they were still using the uh, the 14s, I believe, um, which also a great gun in my opinion. wasn't used enough. I think the M16 kind of overrode it a little too quick. But yeah, M14s a great gun. But early Vietnam, they were the M14s. So depending when they used these Red Riders, you know, they either they used them to mimic either the M14 or the M16. Uh, it's quick kill training for you know your basic training, so that's kind of cool. Um, last little thing. So 1940. Um, the original cost for a brand new Daisy Red Rider in 1940. Two dollars ninety five cents. <laughs> yeah. Talk about uh, the times they have a changed. Of course, the times they still are changing. Um, but yeah, back in 1940, spring of 1940, you know, summer, whatever, kids got out of school. You know, you're what, 10? You know, you're 9, 10, 11, 12 year olds got out of school in the summer, 1940. Maybe walking downtown, look through the window like Ralphie did. We got Red Rider, two dollars ninety-five cents. You can have it, which of course, obviously back then money was a little different. Two ninety-five back then. I still don't even think back then it was a ton of money. Um, but still, two ninety-five, two dollars ninety-five cents. You uh, you know, hand them three dollars and uh, walk out with a gun and you know, maybe a couple uh. Depending on the tax back then, or what state you bought it in, you can walk out with you know, f uh, five pieces of a penny candy, or you know, who knows what the ammo went for back then. So that's about the rundown, guys. I uh, 
I want to decide one thing I didn't check. I wanted to see the total production of these guns to this day. Um, uh, that's that's millions. That's millions upon millions. Cause like in 1953, there was already six million of these made. Uh, you know, 1949 alone, there was one million. So that just goes to show you how many. Uh, it's, it's millions and millions and millions of these that were made. Now they do have, Daisy does make high-powered air rifles, you know, CO2 guns. They make the Red Rider here, obviously. This is the standard version. It's 37.5 inches long, I think. But they do make an adult version Red Rider that is, I think, around 40 inches total length. The, uh, the stock on that is wider. It comes to about here or so. It's like three, four inches taller, you know, wider. It's the same thing, it's just bigger. And of course the buck. I think they started making these in the eighties. That's a little shorty. Yeah, these are only what hell? They're twenty nine. They're not even thirty inches long, so they're fun, just fun little plinkers, man. You can really You can hone your accuracy with a uh, a lever gun. A lever gun BB gun. You can. I mean the only thing you're gonna be lacking is the recoil and of course that is a big deal but uh you can still nonetheless you can enjoy shooting even yourself you don't have to be a kid to use these you know they're fun they've been around they're proven so